We are so excited to have the new pornographers in the studio today. I'm going to take a shot at this, see if I get it right. Simi, Joe, John, Catherine, and Carl. That's right. Joining us yes. today. Thanks so much. Uh, Thanks for having us. Going to be appearing tonight at the Truman. Congratulations on the new album, In the Morse Code of Brake Lights. Oh, thank you. Uh, really spectacular. Spectacular thank stuff. You. We, were, we were trying to make it good. <laughs> you know, uh, you down through know. the years, production roles have kind of stayed in the family. Mm. And you were largely the producer for this one? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, the, the big difference was that, like, John was uh, busy being a new dad. And so, like, in the last couple of records, he would, like, come to my house and basically live in our cottage for a while. And so, I think. From, from that, all that time, I kind of learned how to do a lot of what he was doing, that just through osmosis. I wasn't trying to learn. But, um, you know, and I realized, like, oh, I can, I can do a bunch of this stuff uh, myself. And another um, big thing in this record was that, um, like, Catherine just, you know, she has a studio. She has a full studio in her house, and her recording her own keyboards and just sending them to me. Um, so, I mean... I called myself producer because I guess <laughs> I'd never done it before, but I, I, it's, it's a, I think it's a nebulous term. Like I don't, you don't really yeah. know. Um, what so John's is. got a home studio too, right? Yeah. Or, or a studio oh, if it's in your home. And then you've got a studio in your home as well. So, I mean, it's gotta be pretty convenient to be able to mix and match. It is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I can't do at home. Like I don't record drums or anything, but uh, I can do 80% of the work, which is just me sitting there screwing around, going like, what if I put it through an arpeggiator? What if I put it through an echo? What if I put it through an echo and an arpeggiator? And things like that. Well, you know, sometimes producers will come in and they just sort of make it their own record. And I think there's always been a, sort of a little bit of fear that you didn't want to lose whatever the new pornographers are by handing it over. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we would ever want to to go to a, a big producer. Like, there are producers that I absolutely admire, like uh, Dave Fridman or Steve Albini, but I, if I think about recording with them, I think it would go very badly. Like, I have a feeling like Steve Albini would hate us. <laughs> um, just, just in that situation, if, if it came to recording. Because, you know, um, in some ways, the way we make um, records is kind of ridiculous. And that um, I, I often... I I just bring in half finished songs and assume like, you know, they're I'm gonna get ideas along the way. So why even bother trying to finish them? Even when I bring in songs I think are finished, I rewrite them, and I change the melody and I change the lyrics. I change the structure. So I think that would be very maddening for any producer to deal with. Uh, so we we you know we save them and ourselves by just doing it ourselves. You live in Woodstock, New York. Yeah. Which, you know, there are a fair number of musicians there. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, uh, and your wife, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, helps run Levon Helms. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the barn. barn. Yeah. Well, yeah, which is a, yeah, which is a very cool place to have a guest list spot. Yeah. It, yeah, like I, every, every time I'm there, it always feels, it, it, you know, it always feels exciting. Like I'm, like I'm not jaded uh, by it. Like, like a few months ago, uh, up in up in Levon's widow's house, they they found like the gold record for Big Pink just leaning against a wall, <laughs> and and you know it's like let's take this down and hang it in the venue, and so I, I pass by it all the time, and I think look there it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a I I feel like we accidentally fell. We did we didn't move to Woodstock for any musical reasons, but um, we just fell into it. Like our next door neighbor is this. Uh, amazing person named Happy Traum, who uh, has been around since, you know, he, he was in Greenwich Village in 1960, you know, like, he was one of those guys that befriended Bob Dylan when he first moved you know, from Minnesota, and, you know, and his best friend is John Sebastian, so, and Richard Thompson, so we'll be at our next door neighbor's place, just hobnobbing with all these, you know, legends, and, you know, it's not even that strange, like, there's Donald Fagan, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a strange small town. You've had the luxury of using uh, that space as a rehearsal space yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, which was um was pretty amazing. Uh, we had a we had this strange thing happen that we probably tweeted about about a thousand times that day. 
uh, we had a LaCroix can, an empty LaCroix can just fell off Todd's amp and it just balanced perfectly like that. And it stayed like that for about a day and the vibrations of the music wouldn't knock it over except at some point the vibrations of the music just made it spin on its uh. axis. And we brought it up with um, Levon's widow and his daughter and they said, oh yeah, that's, that's him. Like he did that. Uh, <laughs> they said because he was a prankster. And, and I thought, well, I can't think of any other explanation. And yeah. they, they would say it in a very matter of fact way. Like, oh yeah, that was definitely him. And we go, okay, well, does that mean he likes us? Does that mean Levon <laughs> likes us? That's good. Well, we like you, and we'd love to hear some music if we could. Okay, New pornographers right. in the studio today here at the bridge. down the stairs of your smile on the bridge the new pornographers and of course you can find the studio version on their album in the morse code of brake lights new pornographers playing tonight at the truman you know i uh i don't know that i've ever said this on the air but like when i do an interview i never never know 
whether I've done a good job or not. I walk out and I'm just, it's like somebody's kind of hit me with a hammer right between here. It's like, mm-hmm. I have to ask people like, has this been good or not? Mm-hmm. And when you recorded that song, you weren't even sure you wanted it on the album. Yeah, yeah. I, I was so I related to that. But it, it's, it's nice. It's, um, yeah, it's nice when somebody says like, what are you, you crazy? It's like, oh, yeah. that's the best one. I go, really? Well, I don't know. Um, and it's, it's kind of scary because it, it makes me think like, Maybe I, maybe somewhere in my brain I wrote like a number one hit, but it didn't get past my head. I went, no, that's stupid. No, no one can ever hear that stupid song. Because uh, uh, I guess that's how I feel about a lot of music I hear. Like, yeah. How did you let that out of your brain? Well, you know, y- your songwriting is, and I don't know some other people do it this way, but you come up with a musical idea and you just record it into your phone. Yeah, yeah. And and sometimes they'll stay in there so long that when you go back you don't even remember them. Yeah. Which, which uh, I think is a is a good trick. Um because you 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 know if it's good or not, I think. Like if you hear something and you forgot you did it and you go, "Oh, well, I'm a fan of that weird little thing I muttered into my phone 2 months ago." And and there are some things that are more fully formed ideas that just sat around for years like like our song "Bleeding Heart Show" has that big like "Hey la, Hey la" uh, outro, which is arguably one of like the most popular moments of any of our songs, and that was from like Mass Romantic time. It was just like a part that didn't have a song, and I thought, well, this is cool, but you know, it needs a song good enough. And you know, it, it was in another song earlier, and I thought, no, this sucks. And so this is a lot of this is a lot of stuff, and sometimes just uh, taking like failed songs apart for parts. Um, our song Laws of Change from our second record is um, a lot of the melody is based around me listening to Letter from an Occupant backwards. <laughs> and um, a, lo- a lot of it just sounded like, <laughs> uh, but I, th- I found some cool melodies in there. And so, I don't know, there's a million ways you can do it. I know this is from the last record, but my favorite story of you scavenging for melodies is not being able to get the tune out of your head from your uh, alarm code on your home. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Every, every, every night, just like last thing before I go to bed, it was like, do, 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 do. And I was like, <laughs> I got to put that in the song. <laughs> you know, but telling that story, are you worried that somebody's going to be able to come in and get into your house now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it doesn't matter what... I've thought about this. No. <laughs> it's the same beeping, no matter what. Uh. Uh, you know, it, it, your songs uh, have really great and interesting lyrics, and they have deep meaning for you, but people have often, uh, you know, tried to, you know, decode them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it seems like lately they've be, been a little bit more accessible and maybe even a little bit more personal. You've sort of mentioned the fact that, as an example, opening ceremony and you won't need this where you're going are more, more personal examples. Um, yeah, definitely. You won't you won't need those where you're going. Um, well, I think I think when you've been playing for so long and you're and you can hide behind being a fun band. Um, you could f- hide, hide behind being a rock band. F- for me, it feels like uh, like almost brave to just say, well, I'm just going to sing this by myself because uh, I've always been afraid to do that. So it was like overcoming a fear. So like, we, we do that song, um, You Won't Need Those Where You're Going, every night now, and I, I don't even care if people <laughs> like it. Uh, it's just me uh, exercising is that word? Exercising my demons? Uh, no, that's overstating it. That's overstating it incredibly. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just facing a fear, I guess. <laughs> well, I was really looking forward to some follow-up questions about your demons. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I don't think I get nearly enough credit for having demons. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm happy. <laughs> Maybe this is a good time to let you off the hook by letting you play another song. <laughs> this, yeah, this one, uh, this one deals with a few demons, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
just out of frame With the passenger's name You were afraid to pull behind It was always a battle to arrive At the station alive With all the bags to unpack All the plans for the future to protect Because we come to expect the trains on time A cloud of steam And we're out of the gate Not a fashionable late Wearing long sleeves to hide the mark of Cain Got it when I was young Half eternal, half sung Play a sour no long enough moves with fight or flight The higher beams They temporarily blind They change your mind Thank you Thank you for nothing Didn't want to Pornographers on the Bridge. The new album is in the Morse code of brake lights, and that's where you can find the studio version of Higher Beams. Uh, this is the part of the interview where uh, I tell you, the person who wrote the song, what it's about. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then that's you good. get to tell me how wrong I am. Uh, I, but, pr- I appreciate that. Yeah. It, it, I, 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 it's a real pet peeve of mine when people interview me and they just want me to tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, just come up with your own ideas. Yeah. So my understanding is that this is a song basically driven by anxiety, but the fact that because of personal comfort or lack of money, we are unwilling to go out and take the steps that might actually confront this anxiety and exact change. Yes, it's exactly that. Good for Um, me. And uh, and I think I was, uh, you know, like in a sort of micro and macro political way, like uh, about how people stay in relationships uh, because it's harder to leave than it is to just stay in a lousy relationship and how that kind of expands into being in America right now where, um, you know, we're just basically too comfortable. 
amusing ourselves to death, as the book <laughs> is called. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I know that you didn't start out to become or be a political band, but it just keeps creeping in. Um, well, I, th I think it's hard. Um, it's hard not to be. I mean, I, I mean, I've realized recently, like just being, you know, a band that's you know almost half female is like a political act. You know, because you don't see it that much. Um, I mean, every just a lot of things are political. Right. Well, okay. So you'll need a new backseat driver. It's about a couple in an out of control car. Car is a metaphor for the world. Um, yeah, always is. Correct me if I'm wrong about any of this. Um, surprise knock is about an ice raid. Essentially. Essentially. Flesh it an, out an, if you. An ice raid of the heart, maybe. And then, but you know, the one that I really was kind of taken with was Colossus of Rhodes. Now, Colossus of Rhodes was supposedly one of the wonders of the world, but mm -hmm. it's gone and largely forgotten. Yeah. And so you bring that into projecting it into the future. Um, well, I, it's funny that the song started out to be just a song about depression. It used to be a, like a ballad. And then I decided I wanted to make it sound more like something from All Things Must Pass. And then it, then it, it changed. And yeah, I, I was just thinking about, you know, just looking around in America. You know, I think there's a sense like, there's a, sense, a lot of people have a sense of permanence, you know, even though, uh, you know, the Roman Empire w was, you know, lasted a few thousand years. Didn't, I mean, how long did it last for? Does anybody know how long the Roman Empire lasted for? That didn't make it into Come my on, Aren't research. we supposed to learn this in elementary school? <laughs> was it a thousand years? <laughs> or a week. Yeah, the, 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 the Roman Empire lasted for like a billion years. And... <laughs> and we're like just a couple hundred in, and we can barely keep it together. So, so with all of the deconstruction you do on your own songs, do you always know what they're about? How much meaning do you figure out after the fact? Um, I, I think I, I think I know when I'm writing it, but I try not to think too much about it. Um, like it, it's like it's like the little voice note that I. I write and then I try not to think about it anymore. I think that's good. Let's move on. Um, yeah, yeah. So, sometimes, uh, sometimes you have to go back. Like songs in the past. There are songs in the past that have, I've written breakup songs while I've been in a relationship, and I realized like, oh, it was, I was just foretelling. Like I was, like I, I didn't, I didn't know it, but I was, uh, you know. After after we broke up, I heard this. I heard the song and went, "Oh well, I knew. I knew what was coming, um, even if I wouldn't admit it to myself." Um, so there's, there's a lot of that. So you formed this band in 1997. Was it that long ago? Yeah, I think that it was just an idea back then. And we didn't we, we didn't really do anything until uh, was it like 99 or 2000. First record was released in 2000, yeah, yeah. which means this is the 20th anniversary. Yeah, it's crazy. Congratulations. Kind of nuts. When, it really is. When you did it, you weren't you weren't even thinking about whether or not there would be a second record or whether you'd play this stuff on tour or you were it, th there wasn't a grand design here. Yeah. Um it it all it all happened like absurdly quickly. Um like we you know, I'd been in bands before, and I, I think I just, there was a sense of resignation, like, okay, well, I'm going to have to have another job, but I'm still going to make records. And, and I, like, I knew that I will always want to make music even if nobody cares. So I was as shocked as anybody when this started becoming a thing. And, it, and it, it, still, it still weirds me out. We were talking about Letterman, we were, how, how, like, we were bummed out that Letterman is not in the air anymore and how like in 2000 like that would have been my absolute dream like oh my god can you imagine being on letterman like that's <laughs> as high as it gets and then i did the math and i was on letterman six times which is just <laughs> stupid uh and like i don't i'm not even sure if i mean that as a brag or a humble brag i'm just a it just like if i put myself if i go back 20 years and I think about where we are, like, it's hard to believe. Uh, 
And maybe it's like that Joni Mitchell line, and you know, your dreams lose some grandeur coming true. Like you're you're just, you're living in your life, and you don't you don't realize how. It's like, hey, this is what you wanted, you know. You know, you conceived of this originally as like a uh, you mentioned it earlier, a party band, and yeah. it's sort of a musical collective. And I, I think it's such an interesting dynamic because. You know, everybody seems to have other things that they do as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Carl, even you record as a solo artist. Well, not anymore. I I I dropped that. Yeah. There's no money in it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not joking. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, it's this is your primary creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And, And yet all of these people who have other things going on do come in and participate. Mm -hmm. And and it's different for them. Uh, And it's such an interesting dynamic to me. And it's like 20 years on. Everybody seems to be friends. Yeah. um, I I, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know how you keep it together. I mean, I mean, the band has changed slightly um, through the years, but I don't know. We just, we, we, we figure it out somehow. Um, I mean, at at the heart of it, I think I I just want to, I don't know how everybody else feels. Um, I just want to keep making music and keep writing songs. And this is a great vehicle for that, you know? And and maybe maybe 10 years from now, there's, there'll still be new pornographers records and people will go, what, Newman's the only one left. <laughs> you know, maybe everybody else will have deserted me. But um, I don't, uh, yeah, not likely, she says. <laughs> not me, I won't desert you. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> the, other ba- the other band member is conspicuously silent. <laughs> no, I will never desert you. <laughs> well, now you're just saying that because Catherine said that. <laughs> you had your chance. Know, you had your chance to stand up for me and say you'd never desert me. I know, but I live right down the street. So that's I, true. That's like I, 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 he'll just come <laughs> to my house. <laughs> I just think it's fascinating that we're witnessing the breakup of the new pornographers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I predict in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's going to be when when we're in the car driving away from the station. I was like, "Are you seriously going to desert me? <laughs> Were you kidding?" No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd we'd like uh, to hear one more. I mean, this could be the final song. <laughs> exactly from the new pornographer. I've I've thought that at points in my life. <laughs> Is this the last time? Never. Yeah. To ever feel like you've been cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Drive through the map to the realm of the stars Didn't need a war, but now this one is ours Just fell along until the throne is clear Like anything that you will learn to fear Let it play in the background, tune out the sound Wrong 
when it was all so clear We may be on, be on to something here Drifting like prop castaways Didn't need a war, but it's here I say So smile big, until it's thrown us clear We may be on, be on to something here And then the surprise Surprise knock live here in the Bridge Studios. The studio version on in the Morse code of brake lights, which I'm sure will be at the merch table tonight at the Truman. Yes. Thanks so much for oh, coming thank you in. For this having is us. Just... No, it's, it's great to get up in the morning. <laughs> it really is. Like like when when you're on tour and the nights get later and later, and then there's that one day where you look at your phone and it's like 1 p.m. <laughs> like it's a, it makes you feel depressed. Okay, so just. Uh, just because I'm cruel, I'm going to ask uh, a question that's difficult, very difficult to answer. When that alarm went off this morning, were you looking more forward to this or to the barbecue? This. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing this a long time, haven't you? <laughs> this, but it's a tough call because I love that Kansas City barbecue. <laughs> and the Chiefs. <laughs> Go Chiefs. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having us. When do you, when do you record the ovation? Now. Yeah.